Hi, this is Bart with ATS Special Access Services, and today I'll be focusing on the essential knots for Sprout Level 1. To achieve the figure eight on a bite, what we'd like to do is have between 14 and 16 inches of a bite of rope. When we grab onto this, an easy way of doing it, and there's many ways of doing this and lots of different uh, knot videos online, this just happens to be one way and makes it a little bit easy. So I grab onto that knot right where the tail is, have two fingers out, cross over, come back around and poke through where my fingers were. Now, as I'm poking through, what I'd like to do is I'd like to flip this knot so we have a nice, clean, and dressed figure eight on a bite. The ideal characteristics of this knot is that we have a smaller loop on the top. We're not wasting rope or also making it so we're further away from our anchor. When we're hanging vertically, this is a pretty important key item because we want to be able to transfer up and over. So we have a small loop. All of our lines are parallel and they're running nice in sequence all the way around because we want to be able to inspect the knot. This also helps in untying it. When it's not crossed over and it's, it's dressed well, it's going to untie easier. And then lastly, we want to have about four inches, between three and four inches of a tail on there. And that is going to be the figure eight on a bite. The next classification that we're going to talk about is a stopper knot. This is a required knot, mainly because when we have a tail of rope, we want to ensure that we are not going to exceed that when we're working on rope. Whether repelling or for your safety line, we need to have an indicator or something that's going to stop us from going past the end of this rope. Even if our rope is on to the ground uh, significantly, we still would like to have a stopper knot on there because at some point in time, you may have to tie an inline knot or create a deviation. And what that will do is that will pull up your tail. So it's important to always have a stopper knot. One of the stopper knots that we like to use is essentially called a barrel knot which is, or a simple stopper. And this is as simple as laying your thumb on here crossing over once and twice towards itself and then coming back through on the underside and cinching it down. This is your simple stopper knot or a barrel knot. It's nice to know this knot because this is going to be half of a connection knot or a connecting or a joining knot. This right here, this barrel knot will be the other half when we do that. So having this as a stopper it's good to know. Once you've learned the stopper knot and the barrel knot, which is essentially just a double overhand, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, join two ropes together. And to simply do that is we're taking that double overhand or barrel knot, and we're going to do that on these two tails. I have two different color ropes right here just to make it a little bit easier for you to identify which one. But all we're going to do is we are essentially going to wrap one over the other. And one easy way to do that is to have your thumb going up the body of the rope. To be able to cross over once and twice, poking it through where your thumb was. Again, trying to have a good three to four inches of tail on this. And then simply all you're going to do is you're going to take your thumb and change directions and do the exact same thing on this side. Once you do that, to inspect this knot, what we want to make sure that we have is that we have that X and that these come together and they fit into that groove. So as you can see, we have the cross over here and we have the cross over here with tails going in opposite directions. The midline knot most commonly used is the alpine butterfly. And for the alpine butterfly, the reason it is most commonly used is because it's called a tri-loading knot. A tri-loading knot is simply going to be able to have both ends loaded 
as well as the loop loaded equally. So to do this, one simple method of doing this, and there's several ways of tying this, but this is uh, an easy way to remember, is to cross over your hand one more time. On your third pass is you want to take that third pass and you want to pass it right in the middle. So this little one right here. And we take the outside one, pass it under and through and tension. What is really important here is that we have our cross and X right here in between our two bends. This right here is going to keep this knot together when it's tension, having that X. Thank you for watching ATS's technical video series. We look forward to seeing you in our classes. Make sure to check out our videos on drones and ROVs as well. Thanks so much. Have a great day.